Hi students, in this video we are going to discuss about physical mode of sterilization. In this, first we are going to see about introduction. Microorganisms cause contamination, infection and decay. Necessary to remove or destroy them from materials or from areas. Sterilization is defined as the process by which an article, surface or medium is free of all living microorganisms either in the vegetative and spore form. Here we are going to see about what are the physical agents for sterilization. Sunlight, drying, most heat, Filtration, radiation, ultrasonic and sonic vibrations. In this, first we are going to see about sunlight. Sunlight possesses appreciable bactericidal activity under natural conditions. UV rays can kill microbes and prevent these rays using glass and ozone layer. Bacteria suspended in water are readily destroyed by exposure to sunlight. Next, we are going to see about drying. Moisture is essential for the growth of bacteria. Drying in air has a deleterious effect. Spores are unaffected by drying. Next, we are going to see about the role of heat in physical sterilization. It is the most reliable method of sterilization. Two different type of heat we are following in sterilization. One is dry heat, another one is moisture heat. Many factors are interrelated in this. Temperature and time, number of microorganisms present, the bacterial species are spore forming or not, what is the species of bacteria, the type of material from which the microbes have to be eradicated. The time required for sterilization is inversely proportional to the temperature of exposure and can be expressed as thermal death time which is the minimum time required to kill a suspension of organisms at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment. The presence of organic substances, proteins, nucleic acid, starch, gelatin, sugar, fats increase the thermal death time. First we are going to see in this is dry heat. In that flaming, inoculation loop, tip of forceps, spatula, show to flame till they become red hot. Can dip to ethanol and show to flame also. Next one is incineration, excellent method for contaminated cloth, animal carcasses, pathological materials. Most widely used method of sterilization is hot air oven. Temperature used is 180 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes or 160 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. It is used to sterilize glassware, forceps, scissors and scalpels. Hot air is a bad conductor of heat and its penetrating power is low. The oven is heated by electricity with heating elements in the wall of the chamber. There is a fan to ensure even distribution of air. Oven should not be overloaded. The material should be arranged inside so as to allow free circulation of air in between the objects. Glassware should be perfectly dry. Rubber material should not keep inside. The oven must be allowed to cool slowly for some time before the door is open since the glassware may crack due to sudden or uneven cooling. Next we will study about moist heat. In that first one is pasteurization. Temperature employed is 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes or 72 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 seconds. By this process all non-sporing pathogens such as brucella and salmonella can destroy. Next one is boiling. Vegetative cells can kill by following this method. Not recommended for surgical instruments. Boil for 30 minutes in closed condition is effective. 
Next one is steam under pressure. Different type of autoclaves we are using for sterilization. First one is laboratory autoclaves, second one is hospital autoclaves and industrial autoclaves. These are made up of stainless steel. On the lid, screw clamps are present. Heating is by electricity. The principle of the autoclave is that water boils when its vapor pressure equals that of the surrounding atmosphere. So when pressure increases inside, the temperature at which water boils also increases. Saturated steam has penetrating power. When steam comes into contact with a cooler surface, it condenses to water. The condensed water ensures moist conditions for killing the microbes present. Laboratory autoclave consists of a vertical or horizontal cylinder of stainless steel in a supporting sheet iron case. The lid is fastened by screw clamps and made airtight by an asbestos washer. Upper side of the lid, a discharge tap for air and steam, a pressure gauge and a safety valve that can be set to blow off at any desired pressure, heating by electricity. Sufficient water is put in the cylinder. The material to be sterilized is placed on the tray and the autoclave is heated. The lid is screwed tight with the discharge tap open. The safety valve is adjusted to the required pressure. The steam air mixture is allowed to escape freely till all the air has been displaced. The steam pressure rises inside and when it reaches the desired set level, the safety valve opens and excess steam escapes. From this point, the holding period is calculated. When the holding period is over, the heater is turned off and the autoclave is allowed to cool till the pressure gauge indicates that the pressure inside is equal to the atmospheric pressure. The discharge tap is opened slowly and air is let into autoclave. If the tap is open when the pressure inside is high, Liquid media can spill to outside conical flask or explosion may occur. The domestic pressure cooker serves as an autoclave and used for sterilization to remove microbes from small things. 15 lbs pressure used in autoclave to sterilize. Next one is filtration. Filtration helps to remove bacteria from heat labile liquids such as serum or sugar or antibiotics used for preparation of culture media. Types Candle filters used for purification of water for industrial and drinking purposes. Types of candle filters are unglazed ceramic filters and diatomaceous earth filters. Few more filters are asbestos filters, sintered glass filters and membrane filters. Next one is radiation. Here we can observe two different type of radiations are the ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing radiations examples are X-rays, gamma rays and are highly lethal to DNA and other constituents. They have high penetrating power. It is called as cold sterilization. Next one is non-ionizing radiations. Infrared radiation is used to sterilize pre-packed items such as syringes. Ultraviolet rays are used to disinfect operation theaters and laboratories. Next one is ultrasonic and sonic vibration. It has bactericidal power. Effectiveness variations reported in this, so not using at present.